This week on Crossfeed. If you want to be reincarnated, leave these forms filled out in triplicate. Scientologists, fixing the bridge. Forced conversion. Bob Marley, hymn writer. Get rid of those Jesus signs. Welcome, everybody, to this Hello, week's man. edition of CrossFeed News. Beat you to it, buddy. Uh, I am Dr. Jim Butler. I serve as pastor of Trinity, uh, Trinity St. Luke's Luther Church in Dedham, Massachusetts. I was in Trinity in Springfield for 13 years. I still haven't finished saying that. <laughs> Boy, no control. If you excuse Jim, he's a little disoriented tonight. Little? I, on the other hand, am Pastor Dale Critchley, and I am at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. For real. For real! <laughs> welcome, everyone. Yeah, welcome. It's been a interesting, goofy, busy week for me, and I was just sharing with Dale some stuff I've been reading, and <clears throat> kind of scary and a little bit disorienting, but uh, that is life and theology. Maybe next week we'll talk about some of it. Uh, uh, I don't know, maybe we could do something sometime with the show. It would be really dull for the non-Lutherans, but talk about uh, uh, the three largest Lutheran churches had their conventions this year. Uh, first was Lutheran yep. Church of Missouri Synod, then the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, and now the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America is having their um, convention. And so I was reading some stuff from that. That's a little interesting from It'd my perspective. pretty educational. Because, I mean, one thing about Lutherans is you can't lump them all together. No. Um, but we're not as bad off as the Baptists. You know, the Baptists, you get four Baptists together, you get five opinions. Anyway, <laughs> you get four Lutherans together, you just get a fifth. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> hit the what? We don't know, but there will be a fifth. <laughs> Oh, we better get this going, Dale, before we get too goofy tonight. Yep. Pick your poison. Pick my poison. Well, hey, if I'm going to pick poison, I want to start off with this new hymnal by the Anglicans in Jamaica. Uh, I've got to dedicate this section, I don't know if he watches this or not, to Lawrence Olson, Wisconsin Synod pastor who was the guy who got me into reggae. So, uh, yeah. and made me a Bob Marley fan. So, um, <laughs> re she reggae. Sing one love at your church. Uh, I don't know, but I was wondering if you could put that in the background, or, you know, for people to listen to as they, you know, watching this. Let's get together and feel all right, you know. I shot the sheriff. Maybe we can do on Sunday morning. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, the Anglican Church of Jamaica. Uh, is going to have songs by Bob Marley and Peter Tosh. Um, Bob Marley's One Love and Tosh's Psalm 27. And these two reggae tunes are going to be in this new hymnal. Uh, of course, and it says uh, the, 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 the Anglican Church in Jamaica, they're enthusiastic at having these reggae, reggae songs. Of course, Bob Marley and Peter Tosh were both Rastafarians. They weren't even Christian. Didn't claim to be Christian. Uh, matter of fact, I think Bob Marley was the bishop of Jamaica of the Rastafarians or something like that. He had this big, huge title. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, have you ever wanted to know a, dread, a, a, a Rastafarian? They're the guys who wear dreadlocks. So if you ever see a guy wearing dreadlocks, he's Rastafarian. That means Tarzan was Rastafarian. If you ever watch the Disney Tarzan, he has dreadlocks, so, you know, he must be a yeah, Rastafarian, yeah. too. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's one of their things, and, uh, why in the world do you have a hymnal with non, with, with hymns by complete non-Christians? I don't know. Well, let's see. Wasn't the uh, Battle Hymn of the Republic written by a, a Unitarian? Not that we have that in our hymnal, but a lot of hymnals do. I did not know that. I don't know. I, she might have been 
Yeet Unitarian. I'm really not sure what she was. I remember hearing that. Let's <laughs> check Wikipedia. So, but, okay, the Battle of the Republic, I'm not sure how many people would really know, and it talks about in the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. Yeah, you know, but but Bob Marley's one love? You know, let's get together and feel all right. I mean, people, not, people especially in Jamaica, know who Bob Marley was and knew what Bob Marley believed. Yeah. I mean, there are shrines yeah, to him. You ever go thing. to his house? And... You go to, I mean, if you wanted to pull this off, like, in Iowa, you might be able to get away with it. Because you know, a lot of people know who Bob Marley is, but don't really know much about Rastafarianism and stuff like that. But, um... They probably and, never you know, heard of and, Rastafarianism. Yeah. <laughs> probably heard of it. I don't know. But, um, it depends where you go. But, I mean, yeah, Jamaica, people know very much what that's all about. So, the question is, are they going to get some of that special incense um, to burn at the same time <laughs> that they're singing the hymn? It would make for a fun service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, but then everybody gave me that old time religion. The Lord's Supper because they had the munchies. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You would know better than I, I guess. Oh no! <laughs> uh, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, not really experienced with that. Sorry about this. I know it's a bit silly. So you probably explain a lot, but no. no okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. This is just one of those. The, it's this attempt to be relevant. It doesn't work. Not to say you couldn't have reggae in a service. It wouldn't bother me. I mean, you know, I, I, I like that. I like reggae. Uh, yeah, you want to have a steel drum band in there? Go ahead. You know, wouldn't bother me and my, you know, but mm-hmm. not Bob Marley songs. Um, right. This reminds me of, there's a Christian band not too long ago that did a cover of Mrs. Robinson. It can only be attributable to human error. And, you know, because it says Jesus loves you more than you will know. Yeah. But, like, um, it's not really a Christian song, though, if you understand the context of the song. Do you ever watch, um, uh, whatever the movie is there with, um, Dustin yeah, Hoffman. Concentrate, Pinky, concentrate. That wonderful word, the plastic. Grad. The graduate. The graduate, that's the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's... Right. All, that. Although, um, yeah, I, I remember a few years ago, uh, my, my friend, Pastor Lawrence Olson, who I mentioned, was Wisconsin Synod guy. He's now a professor at uh, their uh, Martin Luther College in New Ulm, Minnesota. Um, I came across some a, a thing of Christian reggae for him, and one of the songs was uh, uh, the song "Majesty," done in reggae style. As in reggae, oh, that'd be pretty cool. It was like great. I mean, they did some awesome steel drums in the back, and it was, and they rearranged doing reggae, and it was a great song. I mean, you could do some stuff like that, which hey, bud. <laughs> Let's party. you know, I don't see how you as a uh, being there, living in, in Jamaica, knowing Bob Marley and knowing, you know, Rastafarianism, how you could just separate the song from the person. You know, it always makes you wonder, the whoever came up with this idea, um, were they, are they native Jamaicans, or did they come in there, you know, sometimes you'll have people that are not directly connected with the church um, with that area coming up with these ideas. I mean, it says uh, Reverend Ernie Gordon, a church spokesman, said that uh, members of the Anglican Church of Jamaica were enthusiastic about including uh, this music in the hymnals. But, um, so I I don't know, I suppose they have a lot of goofier stuff than that. So. Well, it was interesting to me is he says, you know, they... Um, yeah. Uh, the Bob Marley was was not anti God, but he was anti church. 
I mean, you know, and, and I'm just like... I have no idea what that meant. Okay. How do you find God? <laughs> yeah, really. Are you a God-fearing man, Senator? Oh, That's such a so. strange phrase. I've always thought of God as a teacher. I don't know. I just think it's kind of an interesting um, part there, so I'm just not quite sure. And Again, it's not even that old of a church. It's, you know, only from the 1930s. Where did you dig up that old fossil? You... Are you the police? Oh, well. No, ma'am. We're musicians. Have a good time in Jamaica with your new hymnal. That's the only mm-hmm. thing I can say. Maybe it'd be in the new Yaman. ELCA hymnal, too. Come on. You know, my last church, by the way, was one quarter Jamaican. So, really? uh, oh, yeah. So I, I uh, learned to, again, Which and quarter? I, you know, the black quarter. Please? No, thank you. I take it black. Like my men. Uh, yeah, if you were black in my last church, you were Jamaican, pretty much. Which was interesting because they tell you I'm not black. Oh, yeah. Meaning oh, they I'm meant, not African. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a quote African American. The sense of Jamaican. Mm-hmm. But that was funny. When I, was, I said something about that. He goes, "I'm not black. I'm Jamaican." Uh-huh. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I learned that one. So, but uh, that they, they, I, I also learned a lot of joy of Jamaican music from those guys and, and reggae from them, and uh, uh, not to mention a real love of. Uh, Jamaican beef patties and um, jerked pork and jerked chicken. And never yeah. liked plantain bananas, though. A lot of good food. Yeah. But, of course, jerk pork and jerk chicken and stuff don't work if you happen to be Buddha and you have to eat vegetarian. How do you get so big to do food of this kind? And apparently yeah. you don't get to eat Chinese food either. <laughs> Obscure joke. Talk to your parents. This is a bizarre story. <laughs> it is. No. Right. Um, China's State Administration of Religious Affairs in um, Beijing said that all the reincarnations of living Buddhists of Tibetan Buddhism must get government approval, otherwise they are (coughs) illegal or invalid. So, now, this was, this confused me so much that I had to do a little bit of research on Tibetan Buddhism and specifically on this whole concept of living Buddhist. Right. And um, so I went to Wikipedia. So, which is actually probably more accurate than a lot of other sources just because the Tibetan Buddhists tend to be the ones that are putting it together, you know. So, um, basically, first of all, you have to understand that um, Reincarnation in Buddhism is very different from reincarnation in Hinduism. In fact, they generally don't even use that term. That's kind of a Western term used to describe it. Um, they don't, in Tibetan Buddhism, they don't have that sense of, like, you're this one soul that just keeps getting different bodies. It's more of a, I don't know, it, it's almost like you kind of become one with the force and then get an, another body kind of thing. There's it, there's not quite that individuality. Um, but then this this idea of these sort of entities being continually coming back, um, there was a while back, like um, hundreds of years ago, they decided that when you have this living Buddha um, which is this person who's reached a certain stage of enlightenment, when that person is um, reincarnated, they um, their new incarnation inherits the estate of the old one. So what happens is you end up with these dynasties where they're not necessarily even from the same family. And um, and and consequently, they become pretty powerful. You imagine kind of building up this huge wealth that you and that you keep on inheriting, and it just builds up. And, and these people are very respected. They've got a lot of political power and stuff. And in fact, the um, the most notable living Buddha is the Dalai Lama, 
and there have been a series of Dalai Lamas. And um, so, you know, in that sense, I can understand, because there is very much a political um, economic ramification here, the problem is, if, as soon as you say, well, the state has to authorize this reincarnation, what does that mean to your religion? Well, this this sort of soul or, or, or whatever, you know, kind of um, this entity has gone into this person's body, then the government says, oh, nope, sorry, you're not allowed. <laughs> you're not a real one. <laughs> they go, sorry, I'll be leaving now. <laughs> I have, to, I have to go find another body. <laughs> uh, it's got a. It, it, it's to me. It seems like it's the Chinese government trying desperately to um, to get some control. I mean, because the the Chinese government and um, sort of all things Tibetan uh, have never really gotten along real well. So um, uh, it's. It, it's kind of, it, to me, it just seems like a really goofy way to, you know, it's 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 sort of a slap in the face to the Tibetan Buddhists to say, well, sorry if if, if your uh, if if your leaders or, or whatever you want to call it, um, if they want to keep coming back, they're going to need to get permission from our government first. I want to thank you for explaining a lot of that, because I didn't realize there could be more than one Buddha at a time, and uh, that Buddha was really a certain point of enlightenment that you reached. I learned a lot from you. Thank you. Well, I'm sure that it's probably really muddy, and if there's any Buddhists listening or watching, um, you know, they're probably tearing their hair out right now and have gone down a few levels of enlightenment just from having to endure that. Right. But as um, typical government, there are 14 articles, including the principal conditions and approval procedures. And I mean, you know, they, they, they've got this nailed down. I don't understand how you prove that you're really the reincarn a reincarnation of a Buddha, though. That's what I haven't, you know, is there, is there a card there that you show? Is if you have the patience to go through all this stuff, you must have reached that level of enlightenment. <laughs> well, I think that makes about as much sense as you're going to get. Oh, very nice, babe. So. Or, you could go to Minneapolis and help out the bridge. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Maybe that Why will, help? you know, is evidence that you are truly enlightened. If not, Did it's you see that? proof that you're a Scientologist. Did you see the extended comment that we got on our site under the story? No, I did not. Uh, someone named Greg uh, is a Scientologist, and he posted a comment under the story. Oh. And it was, uh, I have a hunch he was going around, and I'll bet you if you Googled it, you'd find this, and I didn't. Um, so I'm, this is a guess. Um, you'd probably find the same statement. Um, pasted in to a whole bunch of different websites that were covering this story. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, he, he had links to different things in that. And basically, well, let's hit the story first. Um, everybody knows about the, um, the crash of the bridge crash in Minneapolis. Well, you know, when, when these disasters happen, people show up to help out. And some of the people that showed up to help out were 20 Scientology volunteers from Minneapolis and surrounding areas. And so they came in to help out the Red Cross and, and stuff like that. And, and they all wear uh, yellow shirts to identify themselves as Scientologists. Okay, well, the, the complaint is that well, they're just doing this as a, um, to try and get people to become Scientologists because they offer their um, their bogus counseling and, and all that kind of stuff to these people. Oh, good grief. Um, well, the person that posted the comment said, you know, this is completely bigoted. We're just in there to help out and, and, and stuff like that. 
<clears throat> so I'm not crazy. You know, I I don't know. I, I look at this and if if I was gonna if I had a disaster in my area and I went to help out, you know, there's different church groups. You think of all the the Christian church groups that went um, down to help out with the Katrina and stuff like that, and are still and, going down to help out with Katrina. Right. Yeah. And they identify themselves. Our church, our Ladies Aid, has been sewing quilts um, and sending them down there. And they, in the corner of every quilt, they sew a little patch that has the name of our church and um, and uh, a Bible verse. So, uh, you know, it, here. So here's the question: They're going to help out, and and yes, they are actually, you know, helping out the Red Cross and stuff. They're not just going around handing out tracts or something, and um. Although they are, you know, offering counseling to people too, which you may or may not agree with that part. But is it okay for them to go down, identify themselves as Scientologists, and um, and use the opportunity when it comes to talk about what they believe with the people that they're helping out? First of all, okay, before I can even answer your question, I have to really, I really have a problem with ABC News here. You know, Scientologists descend on Minneapolis Bridge site. There's 20. There's 20, yeah. yeah I mean, it, <laughs> you, you got to picture this swarm. Yeah, you picture the like swarm of yellow shirts with 20 people there. Okay. Yeah. A couple minivans, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I really kind of think, I think the problem, putting feet on the ground, hands in the air, you know, you know, Helping dig the rubble, rebuilding a house, those are good things to do. Whether you are Christian or Muslim or Scientologist or Buddhist or whatever. I mean, Mm -hmm. that is, and there are those things that we can do together in those types of areas. Uh, Mm -hmm. I've worked on Habitat for Humanity with people who... Everything from devout Christians to atheists. Um, that's not the issue to me. The, to me, the issue with Scientologists is um, their touch assists and their nerve assists and their massages and their general disdain of the mental health profession. You're crazy. You know, that... To say we're going to, you know, do counseling, we're going to do co- mental health support. You know, and we've all seen Tom Cruise, you know, denouncing uh, psych- uh, psychiatry and, uh, you know, psychological and psychi- psych- psychiatric medications. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, I'm going to tell you something. I've known people. I've seen the difference that Prozac and other medications can make in people's lives. I mean, you know, Will Butrin is, in a couple of cases, I know has been a lifesaver for people. That's where I get worried. Find a happy place! Find a happy place! Find a happy place! You know, we may go down there, and we may talk about our faith to people. But we also will admit, you know, there comes a time when you're out of my league, and I need to, you know, give you to a professional therapist. Yeah. But they would discourage you from going to see the therapist. I mean, if, you, if 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 it was, you know, my brother or sister who was on that, you know, one of the people who drowned in, in in that or something. And thank God, there's only about six or seven deaths I've heard. I mean, it's a very, very, very low amount. Of, you know. Yeah, although there's still a bunch of people missing. Right. But um, I mean, the, I think. yeah, but the actual number. I mean, the total number is fairly low, though for whatever reason, and, and thank God for that. But even in that tragedy like that, tell somebody, you know, don't don't seek mental health right now. Uh, you know, come, we'll, we'll take care of you. Um, that's 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 what it will, I would be worried about. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, if I'm, if I go down there and I was talking to somebody, they're really distraught or whatever, you know, I'm probably going to encourage them and talk about the resurrection. But 
I'm also going to say, but you know what? We're not there yet. And so, um, you know, if you need help, get help. Right. You know. We're going to do some emergency triage. I don't know about you. I mean, people ask me what my counseling practice is, and I'll do something kind of emergency triage a little bit. You know, be there in a crisis situation. I will meet with people three, maybe four times at the most. And if I can't deal with it in three or four, you know, times we get together, it's time for me to refer you on. I don't have the expertise, mm-hmm. nor do I have the time to get into a long-term psychotherapeutic situation. Right. And there are people who need good psychotherapy. It can make a yeah. difference in people's lives. I've seen it. I'm not well. Yeah. Yeah. After a few times, you know, if, if it's not, if it's not getting pretty much taken care of, you know, then it's, it's time to, now with, with couples, I'll go five or six times with like, um, marriage counseling, that kind of thing. Um, but when will this insanity end? Only, um, I mean, I use, well, I use, uh, prepare and rich. And mm-hmm. so I, you know, I've got a, something that I, a tool that I'm using to work through. And once we get through that, then that's it. You know, that's, yeah, but that's pre-marriage stuff generally. And, uh, but I, yeah. And there it depends on the couple. I mean, I've got a couple now. I'm trying to, I use that too. I'm trying to find weakness. I'm trying to find work areas. I think the bottom, I think the oh, yeah. bottom agreement was 70%. You know, almost everything else is that 70, 80, 90%, 100%. I mean, it's really, really hard to find a work area when they're, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, that's great. Just get married. <laughs> I don't really need to talk to you people. <laughs> yeah. You're good. <laughs> You're good. You're, you're fine. Oh, I mean. They, 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 you know, and, and the two or three areas where they're lowest, they've already started talking about it. They've already said, yeah, we're probably going to be a little low in this area. We, we, you know, this is something, we, you know, we talked about. Well, <laughs> you got a pretty cool. good handle on yourselves with a couple. So that, and uh, that wedding's going to be next year. Uh, but uh, they, uh, they're, they're an interesting couple. But I don't know. That's my only problem with the, with, with the Scientologist being there. Otherwise, I have no problem with them being out there and doing the work. Just like I have no right. problem with anybody else being out there doing the work. And as long as they're working. Right. You know, as long as they're not getting in the way. Right. right. You know, something like this happens if people are sending missionaries down that aren't helping out and they're just going around, you know, preaching or something. Get out of the way. You That's know, right. there's a time and a place for that, but this is not it. It's time to get things done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, time to work. Or it could be a time to force you to convert. Yeah, Scientologists aren't doing that. No. They're a lot more subtle. <laughs> but there's a situa- article out of the Jerusalem Post. By the way, I'm very happy this week that two of my articles, the one on the Jamaican hymnal and this one, both got up. Uh, there weren't a lot of stories this week. I, I was on vacation like, last no. week. and um, He was and, desperate, and we were... so he took mine. That's it. I got it now. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I mean, we we pulled the stories late, and oh. so I mean, but this was one of the top stories. I do it based on um, which ones are the most popular. So, and this was this was interesting uh, that there is a professor Sana Al Sigi. I guess I don't care how you talk you say her name, uh, and uh, she t- uh, teaches at Palestine University in Gaza City. And was kidnapped by Hamas, and they said they forced her to convert to Islam against her will, and forced her to get married uh, to a Muslim against her will. Mm-hmm. At least this is what her family says. Uh, the right. Muslims argue Hamas says no, no, no. She wanted to get to convert to Islam. She wanted to marry this guy, um, and. Um, you know, but they won't even let the, they won't let her talk to her family alone. Yeah, that's uh, that should be a warning sign right there. Now they claim that she doesn't want to talk to them, but um, so they had a a meeting at the home of a Hamas official, 
and the family was told that the professor had converted to Islam and married a Muslim man. When the professor's stunned mother asked her if this was true, she nodded her head, murmuring, "Yes, God has guided me through to the guided me through the right path." The mother later claimed her daughter made the statement under threats from Hamas gunmen who were in the room. Well, you can't ask her questions like that with people standing around with guns. I mean, come on. Um, so, yeah, they're saying, oh, yeah, she's, um, they, they won't let her see her anymore besides that one meeting with the gunman in the room. And, uh, says, uh, Allah Akluk, a senior Muslim cleric in Gaza City, who was entrusted uh, by the government to look into the case, said that the professor converted to Islam of her free will. She was too afraid to inform her family that she had converted to Islam, he said, so she asked me and other officials to inform her family. She also made it clear that she had no intention to return home unless all her family members converted to Islam. He claimed that the professor did not convert because she wanted to marry a Muslim man, but because she really believed in Islam. If you sit with her, you will feel as if you are sitting with a devout Muslim woman and not a Christian. What does it feel like to sit next to a devout Muslim woman compared to a Christian? I didn't I know, know that felt different. I don't know. Uh, they also I mean, had this Hanan Matar uh, um, activist working with the Palestinian Center for Human Rights. And uh, she said she met and, um, you know... She wanted to convert to Islam, and um, you know she was wearing the hijab and behaved like any religious Muslim woman would. You homo sapiens and your guns. Interestingly, Hamas blames Fatah for planting this false story. Then, as of this moment, they're on double secret probation. Yeah. I thought all the problems True. the Palestinians are had with all the Israelis. I didn't, you know. No, there's infighting between these two different groups, too. Well, no, it just, the, oh, earlier, the reason is, is today the ELCA passed a statement on the, Palestin, on the Palestinians, blaming basically everything on Israel. Oh. Great. So, you know. We don't pass those kinds of things at our convention, but they did. No, because we keep our nose out of politics, unless it's a, a moral issue, like, um, uh, you know, we'll make statements about, uh, like, pro-life statements or um, anti-embryonic uh, uh, stem cell research kind of things, stuff like that. But we don't we don't look at two sinful organizations that are fighting with each other and say, well, this one's a worse sinner than the other one. We don't make those judgments. They say right. they're all sinners and need to repent. Just yeah. Like we are. We're just, we're a little weird that way, but, uh, yeah. So, I mean, Go ahead, continue the problem with the story is, you don't, you don't know what the truth is. I mean, you know, it, to me, it's. I think it's definitely fishy that the family's not allowed to contact her. Anytime you hear that, like, okay, this is this is cult work now. You know, um, if what it comes down to is if they could, you know, they put her in a room with the family and with nobody else able to listen in or anything like that so that she could speak freely. And at that point, she told him, yes, I converted to Islam with my own free will, and I want you to as well. Fine, then I believe her. Probably. But I'd probably check her for a wire, too. But, um, I mean, sort of that, I'm not going to believe it, especially with the family being completely surprised. All of a sudden, she's married this to this guy, and who is this guy, and... I mean, I don't know. The whole thing sounds pretty fishy to me. We run double secret probation, whatever that is. Yeah, I thought so as well. Keep it secret. Keep it secret. Oh, well, that's, that's an interesting story. But let's come back to the United States. Let's go to Illinois. And 
I'm actually on the side of the ACLU for once. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Little town, well, Allerton, Illinois. Button heads that focus on the family. Yeah, well, Jimmy Dobson and I butt heads quite often, actually. <laughs> so nothing new about that. Um, and there's a two green and white billboards, and they say, Welcome to the village of Allerton, where Jesus is Lord. Thought Jesus was Lord a few other places, but that's beside the point. <laughs> I was wondering about that too. <laughs> Randy McCallum, mayor, and the ACLU is objecting. Help! Help! I'm being repressed. And I and I'm sitting there going, and I, I, I'm really again. I I see this sort of kind of smart enough, as if on cue. You know, the American Civil Liberties Union is objecting. Well, you know, this, this former mayor said, you know, all I got was compliments. Compliments, compliments, compliments. And, you know, I don't know how long ago they were they were put up. Um, well, she was the mayor in the 80s. Yeah. Well, she says so she pushed for the side. For like 20 years. <clears throat> I, I, I love this, okay. this statement. The arrogance displayed here by the ACLU in not caring if the whole town believes the science message is illustrative of the left's intentions of coercing every corner of the country to follow its secularized, anti-Christian worldview. How do you know everybody Everybody in the whole town believes? Yeah. yeah did you, did <laughs> For you that want... matter, if you didn't believe, would you move into that town? You know, well... <laughs> the houses are cheap, the people are nice, it's got a good school system. Yeah, but at the same time, if yeah. you were come looking for a house, and you're not a Christian, and you come to this town that says, Welcome to a Lord and where Jesus is Lord, you know, hmm, maybe we should move on to check out the next town. Well, that's exactly you know? why you shouldn't have a sign like that. Right. Because it's not it a, it's a discriminatory. It's unwelcome. Yeah, it's a discriminatory sign. It, it's not the job of the job of the stupid state to establish a religion. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, you could put up a sign, welcome to the village of Alorton. Um, you know, Randy McCollum Mayor, and right next to that you could have another sign, the churches of Alorton welcome you, where we share the news that Jesus is Lord. That's yeah. fine. That's the job right. of the churches. Right. Not the mayor. Not the mayor. And I would, I mean, it, 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 I don't know if we have a church in that town, but if I was a pastor in that town, I'd, I'd be objecting too. What I object to is they automatically treat me like an inferior. Because, well, yeah, what I does it... Yeah, too well. But... No, well, what, what does it mean to say that Jesus is Lord? Well, I am king. You know, does, how do you act that out as a, as a, as a town? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's the thing. You acted out as a church. That's right. It's a confusion of the two kingdoms. Yep. Are you non-Lutherans? Lutherans look at it this way: um, that God, God is the God of the world, but God deals with the world in two different ways. He's what we call the kingdom of the right hand, which is the church. Where God deals with us through his word and through the sacraments and brings us and develops a relationship with him. Then there is the, the world, the, the secular government. That is also under God's rule. But we call that the kingdom of the left hand. And God deals with that not through word and sacrament, but through faulty people. Through Pharaoh and Nebuchadnezzar and those guys in the Old Testament. And through George Bush and Bill Clinton and through... God help us, Deval Patrick in Massachusetts, and even through some of the, you know, you know, strange people in, you know, other places of the world, the Chinese government. God is still the God of these places, but He deals with the kingdom of the left hand, and you got to keep those two kingdoms separate. Luther, believe it or not, was one of the first people to believe in the separation of church and state. Well, and and the thing is, I mean, yeah, the, the leaderships of, of both, just to clarify, are sinners, but. Right. 
the the point is that the kingdom of the right, the church, operates with grace. You know, we're going to love you no matter what. We're going to forgive you no matter what. And um, because that's how God has chosen to act through the church. Um, but the state operates through justice. And that's why a pastor can go and to a prisoner and say, God forgives you, all of your sin is forgiven, but you still need to serve your sentence. And and it's not contradictory. God has forgiven them, but it's not the state's job to forgive. The state's job is to bring about justice. And so they're confusing that here. They're saying, oh, Jesus is Lord. So what does that mean? Does that mean that um, since the state is saying Jesus is Lord and they're operating as a church, does that mean that the, the police in town are going to um, forgive you? When you, um, you know, if you, if you get caught speeding. Well, what about forgiveness? You know? Jesus is Lord of this town. Yeah. What it probably means, you know, other than maybe it's a nice statement, is if anything, we're going to live this town by, quote, Christian principles. But as I've said before, there are no Christian principles. There's only the principles of the law, which Paul in Romans 1 makes it very clear are written in the hearts of all people. Right. Not just Christians. Not just Christians. So. Right. And and in fact, that, because of that understanding, that's how we can say gay marriage is wrong. Because gay marriage is not a, or, you know, heterosexual only marriage is not a Christian principle. It is written on our hearts. It is, you know, that is part of, it, it's, it's more has to do with God's creation. Because that is the way that he established things. Yeah, marriage is also a reflection of our relationship with Christ. And, and primarily that. But the, the rules of it are part of that, that left hand kingdom that, that God has established. Except, and, of course, know, in Massachusetts. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh. he still established it as such. They just choose to ignore it. <laughs> okay. But, I'm sorry, this is one time when I wind up siding with the ACLU, and that doesn't happen in my life very often. Um, but in a lot of free speech cases, and in this case, I, I've got to agree with them. But I, maybe... I just thought it was amusing that... Uh, you know, as if on cue, like you mentioned before, that this is a 20-year-old, you know, even if the, the signs are relatively new, this has been going on for 20 years. Right. <laughs> I think they missed their cue. <laughs> yeah, probably, they probably just now got around to noticing it, or somebody just around, got around complaining to them about it. But maybe Someone you disagree. or something. Yep. Maybe you... Probably. Probably. probably <laughs> I'm talking to... Man. <laughs> You can click on your screen right now, and that will take you to our feedback page if you're doing watching this on iTunes. And yeah. you can um, make your complaint and say, Jim Butler is all wet. Or he's a really cool guy, and he really knows what he's talking about. You can say that, too. That's fine. Not likely. But no. <laughs> <laughs> we can, we can always can email us. Yeah. <laughs> We want you to tell the truth. <laughs> you can email us at podcast at crossfeednews.com or you can call our voicemail line at 206-350-4749. We'd love to hear from you, and if uh, you leave us a voice message, uh, we might just play it back on the show. And you can always go to our website, crossfeednews.com, and leave a comment there, too. Yeah, you can leave a comment under one of the stories, like Greg did. Um, and so there's there's lots of different ways that you can offer your opinions. And you can also, if you run across, and this is something we probably don't emphasize enough, if you run across a religious news story that you find interesting that's not at our site, you can post it there. Beat me to the punch. <laughs> I'd love to have some help posting stuff just besides just Jim and me. Um, the, the whole idea behind CrossFeed was... To um, to get everybody submitting stories and um, 
and talking about them and stuff. And it, it hasn't really happened yet, and I'm hoping that eventually it does. But um, so it becomes more than just a way to find stories for the show. And by doing that, but, um, you will make our sponsor, PDA Performance, happy. They, they're paying for our bandwidth, and they're paying for our server space, and they're doing these really cool things. I mean, they want it to be used. You know, yep. so, you know, make, make make a corporation happy today. You know, <laughs> find stories and, and submit them. And a shout-out to the PDA yeah. Performance to thank them for their, const- their, their continued support of this little project that we do each week. Yeah, and... <laughs> I, you know, we should probably throw this one in that, that we, I don't think we ever have, but the opinions expressed in this show are not necessarily those um, of PDA Performance Incorporated. No, they're definitely I'm not sure. there. <laughs> they're opinions, I'm sure. Well, I, yeah. but they're good folks. And I, I, yeah, they probably agree with a lot of stuff we say. But, but the the, so, the opinions are, are are strictly mine and Dale's. They are not reflective yeah. of PDA performance or necessarily Luther Church, Missouri Synod, or St. Luke's yeah. in Dedham, or St. Paul's in Delaware, Iowa. Yeah, yeah, strictly our own. Strictly our own. So now you're disclaimed every which way you can. <laughs> so so yeah, if you want to bash on us, you're not going to offend anybody else. <laughs> no, not at all. But we need to wrap this up before we get a little any sillier here. Uh, so it's been a great week. A lot of good stories this week. Dale, it's always a joy seeing you, my friend. Yeah, you too. So, and, love, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, good night and God bless. We will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. God bless.